Okay, so now we have our SDPs configured and up, and our BGP session to the root reflector is up. So the next thing we need to do is configure the VPRN itself. So what do we go for? Let's go for one, two, three. Just like we would layer two service, we configure a VPRN service ID, customer number. There's a few things now that need to match um, for this to work, like we discussed in class. Uh, one thing that doesn't need to match is the root distinguisher. So let's go 64496 colon 2 for router 2. We also need our VRF target, our root target, 64496123. This is going to have to match over on PE1 or OR1. We want to give it the auto bind mechanism. So we're going to say resolution any. Remember, in release 10, this is auto bind something. That's okay. Let's put this in auto bind LDP or RSVP or MPLS. So auto bind tunnel resolution any, which is basically going to pick the best path. And because we only have one SDP, it's, it's going to resolve to LDP. The other thing we possibly need to do is we need to set our autonomous system number. Uh, it doesn't have to match the one in the base router, but if we're using BGP as the PE to CE protocol, we need to set it or BGP is not going to work in the VRF. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so no shut. Now we'll stick a loop back in here just so we can test reachability. Loop back address. Let's go 198.51.100.2 slash 32. And by default, that's going to be advertised into multi code protocol BGP. So to see our VPN v4 routes or the VPN v4 BGP table, it is show router BGP routes VPN IPv4. And we'll say hunt because we want to see a local route. Now, here's the network. Next stop is us, right? So this is what we're going to send. This is the rib out. This is what we're going to transmit to neighbors that come up. Uh, the root distinguisher is set. The community value, or the extended community value, is the uh, root target. And we're going to send it to OR4 and OR3. Uh, nothing else particularly interesting there. This is actually, this is the VPN label. So this is the inner label that we're going to use on OR1 to get to the VRF on OR2. So over here, we should have the entry installed, and we do, right? So we have one option. This is going to be direct from router 2, and the one that is not the best path is going to be learned via OR3. There should be a cluster loop there. Okay, so here, next hop or two, from or two, same detail, extended community value, and so on. Uh, the one we receive from or three has a cluster loop. And the reason we see that is because the cluster ID on or three and or four are the same. So that's, that's normal. Over on three, we should, if the box responds, Maybe give that a minute, but it's going to be there. And over here, router BGP routes VPN IPv4, we're not going to see anything, right? And the reason we don't see anything here is because we haven't configured uh, the root target in any VRF locally to OR1. The reason these guys, okay, I'll just disconnect. Did it crash, maybe? The reason the reason uh, the root reflector has it is the root reflector is responsible for aggregating all prefixes. So the root reflector is going to have them all. The PE node is not necessarily going to have them. But if it doesn't have the VRF configured or the extended root target as an import, it's not going to install them. So let's remedy that. We go config service VPRN. One two three customer one create. Actually, let's go three two one just for the sake of it to prove the point. Root distinguisher six four four nine six and we'll go one. 
Right, so the root distinguisher over on uh, or two one six four four nine six colon two. This is just to show the root distinguisher doesn't matter, uh, and the VRF target does matter. So we go six four four nine six one two three auto bind tunnel resolution any and no shut. So we'll put a loop back in here again. Tell it it's a loop back, and we'll go 198.5100.1 slash 32. So now we should see uh, both prefixes here. All right, so we see two because we received it. We need to do the hunt command to see one because it's locally originated into multi protocol BGP. So VPN label for this guy is 262138. It's the same for this guy, right? That's coincidental. Okay, and the VRF target. Okay, so the VR, VPRN imported is an important part of this now. This is telling us that VPRN321 locally has imported the prefix based on a matching community value. You can do something like VRF import and use a policy. Uh, but that's out of scope for here. Let's not get too bothered by these things. So can we ping 321.198.5100.2? We should be able to. Yes, we can. Uh, how are we getting over to... We're going via 4 to get to router 2. So uh, traffic is not going directly across the top link. That's fine. doesn't matter. And if I have a quick look, we want to see a packet capture of behavior. Uh, okay, so cat one. Which goes to router four. Goes to two, three, four, this guy. So virtual bridge, one, two, TCP dump. And we want to do a verbose. So let's do our ping again. Let's see if we have our MPLS packet, and we do. So here we go. We can see we're going from 1.850.100.1 to that two. It's within the VRF. Um, router four has no idea what the VRF is. That doesn't matter. But the top label. The outer label is 131069. So if we look at the LDP binding table for prefix prefix 192.02.2 slash 32, we see the egress label is 131069. So that command is quite handy. Uh, so that is the outer label. The inner label, 262138. We're going to see in our BGP table VPNv4 198.51.100.2 slash 32. It doesn't let me do that. Whatever. Here we go. 262.138. So that's just a demonstration of how to get BGP up and running.